Amen. I'm going to hide behind oh, the mountain. I'm going to hide behind oh, the mountain. I'm going to hide behind oh, the mountain. Jesus is his, oh, he's the mountain, I know Jesus is, oh, the mountain, I know that Jesus is, oh, the mountain.
And then the Philistine came on the, on the Jew near unto David. And the man that, that bare the, bear the shield went before him. And when the Philistines looked about and saw David, he, he disdained him, for, for, he, for he was but a youth and needy, and of a fair continue. And the Philistines said unto David, I am, I am a dog, if that thou comest to me with, with staves. And the Philistines cursed David by his staff. <coughs> May that be a reading of the word. I read first. I read first Samuel uh-huh. 17 to 4, 41 to 43. May that be a blessing of the reading of the word. Amen. 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 Well, Amen. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Because I know without you, Father, we have nothing. Nothing. Yes. Father, I ask you to throw your love all around Help me, Lord. Help me. Help me. Father, whatever we are going through. We yes, want yes. Yes, Lord. We want you to lift us higher and higher. Higher and higher. Yes, yes. Teach us how to love, Father, and how to be there. God, this is God that you have all power. Oh, yes. power. Oh, Whatever power. we are going through, Father, the only thing we got to do is take it to you. Yes, yes. Lord. Father, yes, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Bless our family, Father, yes. one by one and name by name. Right. Touch, touch us, Lord. Touch, church, touch us. Touch us, Lord. Father. Touch us. Father, bless this church. Touch us. Bless those that are in need, Father. Everybody yes. standing in need of prayer. Yes. yes. Father, we are nothing without you. Nothing. Yes. Father, bless the pastor. Bless the pastor. Heavenly. Bless the Lord. Father, bless the mother, Lord. Yes. Bless them, Father. Yes. Bless the deacon, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father, Lord. Bless yes. The yes. And the on the yes. Well, yes. Father, yes. bless the mother, Father, because we didn't need you. Yes. The one coming on after them, Father. Uh-huh. Father, bless the new class, Mother. Yes. yes. Bless the Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, yes. 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 So, Father, yes. I'm being weak. Well, but I know you is able. Able, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 And Father, when we can't call upon can't call them. Well, Father, we ask you to go visit the hospital. Yes, Father, Lord. Father, we ask you to go visit the White House. Well, Father, Father, we ask you to go visit the people out in the street, the homeless. Father. Yes, 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 Father, yes, 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 yes. For your grace, your mercy. Yes, your yes. mercy. Father, you is God. God. And that's why I'm calling them on you. Calling on you. And higher and higher. Yes. Higher. So one day, Father. One day. Yes. My name. Yes, yes and Lord. And I know I got the answer. Yes, well, Father, Lord. I want to ask you to receive me in your kingdom. Yes, yes. Your kingdom. Yes, 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 y
thank you dearly. We thank you so gracefully for helping us lift up the Lord through praises and worship. We now turn the remaining service over to the pulpit and the choir. Amen. God bless you. morning. On behalf of Reverend Dr. Michael A. Smith and First Lady Patricia Smith and the entire Antioch East Baptist Church family, we would like to welcome you, whether you're live stream or here in person. We are so happy you decided to worship and help us lift up the name of Jesus this morning. Thank you again, and you are welcome. Our thought for this week God will meet you where you are in order to take you where he wants you to go. Again, thank you, and you are welcome. We thank God for our very own Sister Brittany Parker for that warm welcome. We ask at this time that you pay attention to the screen for the following announcements.
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. O oh, good and gracious Father, you have allowed us to come into this place. Some may be on the internet or in person, Lord, but the really good thing about you is that you're omnipotent. So you're everywhere at the same time, all the time. So Father God, it's, it's, it's today that we set aside to worship and lift your name. Lord, there are so many distractions in this world today. So many things we never thought we even see, read, feel, or hear about. But Lord, we know you're in the blessing business. So we come right now thanking you for everything. All the blessings you've given us all the way down through the years. There are so many people represented in your, your kingdom today, Lord. So instead of calling names, Lord, we're just going to cry out, thank you, Father. We're so grateful for every family under the sound of my voice. Lord, you said in your good word, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on to your own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge you when you will direct our paths. So Lord, we acknowledge you today. We're much obliged to you today, Father God. And we thank you for the man of God who's gonna bring the word. Lord, we thank you for his loving wife, his family, the ministers, the ushers, this great choir, the musician, these believers, deacons, deaconesses, ministerials, staff all over the world. We much obliged to you today, Father. Lord, I want to set out a little time to thank you for our youth. Lord, they see so much and hear so much and feel so much and go through so much, Lord. And we just want to say thank you for protecting our own. 
Lord, there's so many things going on, but we know one thing about it. You sit high and look low. So, Lord, we just thank you for today because we set aside to worship you. And we know that down through the year, you've been good to us. So even when we wake up, we don't have to wait to get into a, a special place. We can just say thank you right where we are. So today is no different. So, Lord, as I culminate this prayer, Lord, I thank you for all the things you've got down in our unforeseeable future. Lord, thank you for blessing us in our respective places. And, Lord, we don't want to ever, ever, ever forget to give you all the glory. It's in your name that I pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 And praise God.
Good morning. May the ushers come forward. Father God, we all gather here with all humble hearts, and we just want to say thank you for this offering that we're about to receive, Father God. And we also just want to just say that we also issue a special prayer for Deacon Alonzo Wright and hope that today will be a great day for him and tomorrow will be even a better day, Father God. And we just come before you and we just want to say thank you, Father God, for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you are about to do for us right now, Father God. In your son Jesus' name, we say this prayer in all prayers. Amen.
such a blessing just to be able to hear music, isn't it? We have been blessed these past two weeks to hear the organ and to hear it resonate throughout this sanctuary. It, it is a blessing just to be able to say that God has given us grace one more time. I look around, I like to scan the sanctuary and just scanning and just saying, God, I'm grateful. Looking around and I see that Reverend Arlene Beach has made it back with us and we have kept her in prayer. But there are many others. We see new faces. We, we see the blessed faces that we find comfort. But with all the things that are going on around us, sometimes we just got to plan ourselves and say, Lord, please be with us. I don't know what's going on in your life. I, I don't know what you're going through what you're coming out of and what you're getting ready to enter into, but God does. We have had a series, it's a six-part series, we have been focusing on the series Roadkill. And as we have prayed and we reminded ourselves when we first started, I bet ever since we started this series, you've seen more Roadkill along the roads then you probably noticed before we went into this particular series. And that means that you're being observed, and that also means, too, you thank God for your life and thank God for another day's journey. I want to thank God for Brother James Meadows, who is with us today as the Minister of Music. God bless you. And also Brother A.J. Leslie, who's on the drum today. We thank God. And we thank God for our choir Amen. And we thank God for each and every one of you, our deacons, with the devotions today, this morning. Now, it is a blessing. And before I go any further, I, I just want you all to continue to keep one of our very own lifted up. You can name Ross, a diligent soldier who has served on the deacon board for many years, but 25 years as the chairman. So we, we just want to keep him and his wife, uh, Evangelist Nayutha Ross, lifted up. I won't take up a lot of time today. I, I am just, just in awe with the hands of the Lord. But I do need for you all, if you can, those who are able to stand this morning in this third part of our series. We are visiting the book of Luke the 22nd chapter. We have two segments in that particular scripture that we were covering. Then we're going to move over into the 23rd chapter. We have Luke, the 22nd chapter, starting with the 47th verse. And while he yet spake, and behold, a multitude and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the son of man with a kiss? When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto the Lord, Shall we smite with the sword? Luke 22, 60 verse. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he said unto him, Before thou cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Now Luke the 23rd and 33rd verse says, And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him 
and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. You all may be seated. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we take your word not for granted. Lord, we're not even worthy to read it or speak it, but we thank you for your grace, which is sufficient. We ask at this time, God, that we stay on the path that you so desire for us to be on. We ask, God, that we fulfill your glory and your desires, Lord, not our own, God, because it is about you and not ourselves. So, Lord, have thine own way. Use us like never before. Let something be spoken that can be of credence. Let something be spoken that can fulfill one's desires. Let it be said that a quench will be thirst. Lord, we thank you right now. Please, Lord, quench thy thirst. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, we claim the victory. Amen, amen, amen. This morning, I would like for us to stay within our series of Road Kill, but I want to talk to you this morning about avoiding being sidetracked. Avoiding being sidetracked. How many of us in life have been sidetracked along the way? You know, you start off in one direction, and then something happens, even on your daily task, you have said, many of us like to do our planning, and we have said at this time, I'm going to do this, and at that time, I must have this accomplished, but have you ever been in the midst of a mission, and someone will call you, someone will come your way, something will happen and throw you off course? Have any of us ever been thrown off course? Have any of us had a vision board? And on this vision board, we say, when I'm this age, I want to accomplish this. By this age, I want that to happen. At this age, I want to be in retirement. And by that age, God, I'm ready to go home whenever you call me. And then we find out we may not accomplish what we want in our 20s. We may not come into our 40s, our 50s. Then we get frustrated because things are not happening the way we so desire. It's so easy to be sidetracking. And you look at the uh, Oxford language, it sidetrack is a cause of someone being distracted or being thrown off course from something of importance uh, that needs to be immediately done. I want to talk to you today about the sidetrack that we want to avoid in reference to our walk with the Lord and in reference to our faith. In the time that we're living in today, many are questioning about God and questioning about, is it really about the church? Church people are the last people that I want to be around. Church folks got too much going on. I can just turn my television on. I want to say to live streamers that are not able to be with us, we're so grateful that you can turn your television on and be with us. But so many of us find every excuse not to continue to stay on track with the Lord. It's too much work. It's too much of that holy roly stuff. It's too much of, I hear so much about God. I'm sick of hearing about God. I want to do my thing, and once I'm finished with my thing, then I give God his time. But then you have no problem interrupting God when you want something. You will bother him all day and all night because you want it, and you want it right then and there. God is not moving fast enough for you, but God have enough patience for you to do whatever you do and dismiss him, and he's still there waiting for you. We're dealing with three people, and I wanted to make sure we read those three scriptures in the book of Luke, and we first started off in the 22nd chapter, and we come into the first verses that we read. We're reading about Judas. Judas, one that we often say, oh, yeah, Judas is that betrayer. Judas is this, and Judas is that. But um, have many of us betrayed others? Have many of us been one of those Judas at time? We haven't always played the way it should be played. We've always done things the right way. Have you always done things the right way? Have you always been on course? Have you always been that one saying, praise ye the Lord. When prayers go up, blessings come down. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. How many of us have been thrown off course because we took our eyes off the faith of God and we put them on the sight of other things? You know, this morning when I got up and Lady Patricia and I was getting ourselves prepared for church service, and it was interesting like we always do. We watch some news and then we watch our services in the morning that we want to see. But nothing changes in reference to life. There's still killing. 
there's still all of the things going on with the government and the White House, outhouse, and every other house. It hasn't changed. People still looking at you, and they telling you, I promise I'll do this and that. And once they get in the office, they forget about what they promised. It's all about being in the office. We hold so many people up onto a high esteem that we forget to remember that God is above all things. And we get so caught up in our moments that we forget about the moments of God. See, Judas was one that was all about the money. How many of us are all about the money? You know, we say we are all about the Benjamins and we're all about whatever you can give me. How many of us have been like Judas that in life we've been about ourselves and not about God? If you say you haven't, you know you haven't lived long enough because there will be a time in life when you think it's all about you. You know, I, I realize with women, you can only wear high heels for so long, eventually your feet going to give out on you. I realize with men, we can be bust for so long, eventually the muscles are going to give out on us because we lose body mass. you only in your prime for a moment. It says prime. Why does it call it prime? Because that's the moment when you got it all going on, but eventually it will fade away. You may say, I once was a bodybuilder. You can tell those that have been cut along the way and being bodybuilders. But I can tell you, if you find a 70 or 80 year old bodybuilder, they may be still a tight, but you will see the muscles not as big as they once were. You will see that life has changed on you. And one thing about it is that we get caught up in us, we will get sidetracked in being caught up in God. We can get caught up in so many other things, and that's what Judas did. Judas was in a place that he was human. But Judas was not in a place where he was truly a follower of Christ. Judas found himself, and even it tells us that we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. It tells us against, it tells us about those rulers over the darkness of this world. It even tells us that we wrestle against spiritual wickedness in high places. See, we think that we can go up against a spirit. But I want you to know, if you're not wrapped up and tied up in God, I promise you, just like many of them back in the day in the Bible, you will see they got beaten by the Spirit because they were not fully armored with the Spirit. I want you to know, don't go try to play up against the devil thinking you're going to win out with the devil if you don't have the Lord on your side. Amen. See, Judas, the beautiful thing about Judas, we said Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss. But I want you to know Jesus kissed Judas before Judas kissed Jesus. Because when they were in the upper room, it was customary when they came together. They would hug each other. They would kiss on each other. Jesus would wash their feet. That's what it said. And he did that. He came with them with love. See, Jesus came the right way. But Judas came another way. Have you ever been around those that give you a half hello? They'll give you a little finger up and they don't want to acknowledge you. I don't worry about them because I say God will deal with them. I got to worry about how I treat them. You got to worry about how you smile. See, mine is real. If yours is not genuine, that's on you. It's not on me. So you can be whoever you be. You don't have to like me, but the word tells you that you got to love me. I don't have to like you, but the word says I have to love you. And if the word tells me that, I got to stand by that. I can't play two sides because if I play two sides. I'm going to lose who I am for the Lord. I want you to know that's what Judas was doing. Judas was in a place, he was pretending. It takes a lot of work to pretend. It takes a lot of, too much energy for me for negativity. It's too much energy to put on this show and think that you know it all and think you got the right way. It's too, I don't have all the ways and all the answers. Only God has that. It's time for us to put up the games. It's time for us to put up the two faces. I'm not just talking about us here in the Antioch East. I'm talking about those that are live streaming with us. I'm talking about those that are on the outside. Aren't you tired of playing games? Aren't you tired of playing God? You say that you've been called by God. You say you're doing the work of God. But does it show that God is in the presence? You know what I do when pre preachers are preaching? I do be studying through my word to make sure they're saying the right thing. You don't have to worry about me. Because I'm going to tell you some God will whip me if I'm not telling the right things. You better worry about yourself, that you in there gaining what you need to gain and making sure you understand what you need to understand. Because when we walk out of this room, out of this sanctuary, you held accountable for you. You're not held accountable for me. But I'm held accountable making sure I give you what God has for you. And if you receive it, it's up to you. But if you don't, it's up to you. I, 
I'm looking forward to what's on your mind with our Sunday school, with a vacation Bible school, because they're going to come forward to you with a platform. But I'm going to say, why do we wait to vacation Bible school to tell people to come to church? You should be coming to church every Sunday, because I'm going to tell you, if you ask our superintendent and our assistant superintendent, they'll tell you God's word is always going on. We've gotten so lazy about coming to Sunday school. We don't need it, but that's a lot. Because if we want to know what's happening with our children, we don't cause our children to come to church anymore. We don't want them to learn God's word. You know why you don't want them to learn God's word? Because you ain't learning it. And if you ain't learning it, it's too much work. It's too much getting up early in the morning. You got to get up because Jesus, he got up early in the morning for you and I. I want you to know here with Judas... We, we're finding ourselves now in a time, and you want me to be honest with you? I have a responsibility as a pastor. I have a responsibility as a man or woman of the gospel to tell you that there's a heaven and there's a hell, and you're not going to miss both of them, so you make up on your mind which trip you're going to go on because I'm going to tell you, there is two, and you won't be fortunate enough to miss both of them. In God's word today, see, I, I feel good this morning because when I woke up and I saw all this killing, a mother and a daughter killing a grandmama and baking her and cooking her on a grill, what kind of world are we living in? Finding a young man been sent off to go and catch the bus to learn how to get to work. Another young man kill him. What kind of world are we living in? I see another people talking about we preachers. We're living God's world, and we're defiling the pulpit. There's something wrong with what's going on. I want you to know today it ain't about us. I see Sister Lula Fambro. I told her if I saw her again this Sunday, I'm going to call out her name because she done been through some stuff. But she didn't turn on Jesus. She turned to Jesus and what she's going through. I want to say this morning, we're dealing with three personalities. Judas is a grabber. Judas is one that is filled with the Spirit. It's a given. But Judas is, has a time to make a decision. Jesus have him in the upper room. He give him opportunity to repent. And then he tell him to go about his business. God is giving you an opportunity, giving me an opportunity to get it right. Whatever that stuff is, you caring about somebody else, get that stuff off of you. Don't let that stuff bondage you. Well, they didn't do this for me, but they did that for her, or they did that for him. Well, don't worry about what they done for him and her. But what God got for you is going to be better for whatever they can give. So understand it right now. I want, I want what they got. I need what they have. They live in the life. You don't know what kind of life they're living. Someone shared something with me, this beautiful person that they know, looking good every day, beautiful person, loving on others, but at home she's being beaten down and beaten up, and nobody knows it. But she's still showing love. How do you show love when you're in an abusive house? I want to know, how do we show love in God's house when we're abusing God's house? If you're going to beat me down in here, I might as well stay out there. We got to pull ourselves up by the bootstrap and avoid being sidetracked. We find Brother Peter. Have you ever found those that are so full of themselves? You know what? I want you to tell you something. We should love ourselves. We should think that, hey, God, I am a beautiful masterpiece. I understand, God, that I'm a masterpiece in the making because it won't be done until I get to the other side. But what we fall at is when we think more of ourselves than we ought to. We think we're the best preacher. We think we're the best Sunday school teacher. Think we're the best deacon. Think we're the best mother. Think we're the best first lady. Think we're the best this and that. When you get caught up in that, you'll lose your way. There's only one best, and that's Jesus Christ. But through him, if I call on him, if he lives in me, if I depend on him, I am a beauty. I am a masterpiece. I am one of his instruments. I am one of his vessels. I am one of his chosen ones. I am the one walking by faith and not by sight. Is there anything too hard for God? Today, see, Peter, his bigger problem was saying what I won't do. 
just like us. My child will never do. You better shut your mouth because I'm going to tell you something. Your child will make you a big fool. Your child will show you that they would do things you never thought before. My mom and daddy wouldn't do that. Your mom and daddy done did a lot more than that. Oh, I never say this. I never say that. You know what's so interesting? We got so much fulfillment, so much words of knowledge, so much compass in what you should do. We have so many words to tell everybody else until we're in the fire. And when we're in the fire, it's the worst thing that ever happened. We all got to walk through the fire. Peter. He said that I would not even betray you, Lord. I would be with you. But then it was Jesus that reminded him, Simon, Simon, I want you to know that the devil seeks you, and he will sift you like wheat. I want you to know he will take you. The devil will do some things with you. And if you ain't got God on your side, you're going to be messed up, messed out, and everything else. you not only be a roadkill, you'll be burning in eternity. See, the devil does not want you to have joy. The devil does not want you to believe in God. The devil don't want our young people picking up God's word. How many of y'all, let's be honest, if it's not Bible said, if it's not Sunday school, if it's not coming into the church today, how many of us just really take the time and give God what is due to him? I'm not saying when you want something. How many of us block our time in the day and say, God, this is my meditation time with you. I'm going to put on my phone and somebody try to contact me. I'm not receiving phone calls at this time. How many of us will go into a room and we'll say, I'm not going to answer the phone. I'm going to give God what he is due at this time. We need to learn how to get a relationship with God if we want God to have a relationship with us. We need to know what it is to be with him. See, you think about with our beloved brother uh, Judas. It was all about deceit. But with our brother Peter, it was all about denial. We want to claim God when we want to claim him. It's okay if you're around your Christian friends. If you get around others, then it changes. What are we and who are we serving? Peter was a big man. Peter of all of the disciples, if he will fall, any of us will fall. I love those that think they big and bad. But I always say there's a big and bad one born every day. So when you're trying to go up against the big and bad, you better make sure you got what you need. When somebody says, I got my peace, that peace won't serve you and it won't save you. You need this peace in order to be able to deal with what you got to deal with. You got to be able to call on God because, God, I done got sidetracked. I was looking at what others were doing. I was thinking that I was in control. I realized I had to get off the steering wheel. I've been holding on it too long and move over in the passenger seat. We love to be praised by what a great driver we are. There are those that don't do well with reverse, and I love to reverse. I love the challenge to put my car in reverse and I can get it in there. But there are others that start to become frantic in trying to get it in there. But the thing is, by looking in reverse, you got to have enough faith to go back. But my thing is that I can only go back so far, but eventually I got to go forward. You can only go back so far, but eventually you got to go forward. A lot of times we assume when people are on a journey in life, it's always straight. There are times when God is going to do a detour on you because you think the straight is going to be the only way. How many of us have been detoured in our lives? We have been hurt in our lives. We have lost in our lives. We have failed in our lives. We have been blinded in our lives. We have been misunderstood in our lives. How many of us have been ever in that situation? And in that situation, you don't see what's coming, but God knows what's coming. I mean, one of my beloved sisters, and she knows who she is. She had two car accidents. I remember one, she was doing something. She was trying to work for Christmas, trying to make sure she had enough to take care of a family member. She was getting an automobile for that family member. She was driving that day, and then somebody hit her like none other, and they knocked her over into the trees and the wood, and she got in the car, and he was arguing at her. She said, Pastor, you ought to saw this man attack me. She was just coming at me, and I had to call on Jesus. She was more disturbed by the way they spoke to her than she was about the car accident. 
A year later, she's in another car accident, but she's still giving God the praises. She's still present in God's house. And she always tell me, where God has you at this time is meant to be. I want you to know where God have you at this time is meant to be. Don't get blindsided. Don't get to the point you get sidetracked. You lose the vision what God is trying to do with you. See, Peter had it all mixed up. Peter thought it was about grandstanding, but it was about falling at the humility of God's grace. Peter thought that it was about him, but it was always about Jesus. When Peter should have been quiet, he was busy boasting. When he should have shown love, he would show brutality. When Peter should have, like we said, instead of speaking but listening, he did not. Because Peter was so lost in Peter that he had forgotten about Jesus. How many of us have forgotten about Jesus? I met a dear friend by the name of Andrew, and I'm glad to see you, Andrew. Met a dear friend, and he said, I'm going to come to the church, Pastor. And he's here today. I, I am so grateful with his mother, who lost her husband. I saw her on post today. She didn't let it hold her down that she lost her husband. She got to hold it up. Her husband's birthday was this week. She didn't let that hold her down. She stayed in no post, just a smiling, because she's saying that I would not be sidetracked. Yes, you've taken my husband. Yes, it's been a dark place at this time, but I got to keep moving. I don't see where I'm going right now, God. My mind is all messed up right now, but I'm totally dependent on you, because if you did it for me before, you will do it for me again. If I ever fall in before, you will continue to lift me up, and I may even keep walking. I don't see where I'm going, and even if I bump into a chair, he'll sway me to the other side. That's how God works. Sometimes we got to go up against something in order for God to get us where we need to be. Amen. Amen. We understand with Peter, it was all about denial. Have you ever denied God? Have you ever denied him in your life? Somebody said, no, but did you deny him when you didn't get on your knees or you didn't stop and pray for him? Pray to him? Did you deny him when you went to your food so quick we forgot what it was to stop and say grace? Did you deny him when everything wasn't going your way? You didn't call on Jesus. You called on your friends. It was interesting this week. I was going through a moment. I didn't tell Lady Patricia. I didn't tell my boys. And I started trying to remember my friends and all those I'm close to. And I got ready to call them. And Jesus kept telling me, put that phone down. Every time I wanted to pick it up, put it down. I had to put it down and I had to release and let go. And I said, okay, God, what you saying to me? He's saying that you always depend on them, but you tell people you depend on me. When are you going to let me just do it? And you just stop and depend upon me. I want to tell you now, put it down. Put it down. Because I deny God when I come to you and I don't go to him first. I deny God when I tell everyone else, thank you, Jesus, for God sending you in my life. But I need to be telling God, thank you for Jesus being a part of my life. The final one we have is the death. We have the deceit. We have the denial. Then the last passage we read was in the book of Luke, the 23rd chapter. The death. We found Judas died. Judas died because Judas couldn't find any peace. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, whatever you've done in your life that just brings you no peace, you don't feel like you can get it right with God, God will receive you broken, torn up, torn down, whatever. He will receive you. The only thing he wants you to know is he's here. Call on him. Do not be like Judas and give in and give out. But then with Peter, Peter ran away. A lot of times, and that's called sidetracked as well, Peter forgot about all the things he told Jesus. He forgot about all the things he said he would do with Jesus. He forgot about everything. Peter had to be killed in order to be revived. You say, Peter did not die. Yes, he did. He died spiritually. Peter had to go away to get it together. Sometimes we got to go away and get it together. Some of us go on sabbatical. Some of us stay. We got to take our trip. We got to go somewhere to get our minds together. Peter had to be broken down in order to be built up. Peter ran away. He ran away because of the shame. We did all that talking. Have you ever had a friend like this? I got your back. I remember third grade. I never forget one of my best friends. Harold was my best friend. Harold was light skin. I was brown skin. I used to have a little joke. I would call him Yellow Jack. He'll call me Black Jack. We would joke about bees and everything. But Harold had this one guy that always tormented him. Harold had what you call, all of us have good hair. But he had the curly hair. He had the light skin freckles. Harold was a cute kid. 
But Harold and Reginald were having a confrontation. And we were in the third grade class. I said, Harold, I got your back. I got you, Harold. And we were not either fighters, neither one of us, but Harold went out and they were just talking. Nothing was happening. He said, what you gonna do? He said, what you gonna do? He said, the same thing you gonna do. Nobody was doing anything. All of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden we had to get this party started. I pushed Harold on Reginald. The next thing you know, they were fighting. And I realized that's how the devil is. The devil's going to bring you up against, he's going to come up against you, what you're going to do? And you're going to say, what you're going to do? And then you're going to find in life is going to be up against you. The devil's going to push somebody up on you. And I want you to be ready for the push because he will push you when you don't even see it coming. He will push you just to see you fall. He will push you just to break you. He will push you because he want to show you that he's in control. He will push. He'll push your attitude. He will push your spirit. He will push your heart. He will push everything about you because he want to see you defeated. But then there came Jesus. When Peter was busy destroying, Jesus was building up. When Judas was busy selling out, Jesus had already paid the price. He was just waiting for the opportunity for it all to take place. It is Jesus that says in John 11, 25 through 26, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe thou this. I want you to know, believe thou this this day. You don't have to continue to be sidetracked. You need to be on track. Someone told me, and they always remind a couple of members, Pastor, you remember that time you preach, stay in your own lane? I said, I think so. They said, well, you preach about stay in your own lane, but I want to say, not only stay in your own lane, but don't be sidetracked. Don't be sidetracked about the things that's trying to destroy you. Don't be sidetracked about those things that want to consume you. Don't be sidetracked about anything that's trying to take away the glory of God. i leave you with this. If I can sidetrack you, that's one less person I have to worry about trying to get in the kingdom of heaven. If I can sidetrack you, you'll never know what it is to have the grace of God upon you. If I can sidetrack you, you will never be calling on God. You'll just be saying all the time, have mercy. But your mercy would mean nothing because you haven't called on the mercy of God. I can, if I have your mind, your heart, and your spirit, I can do a lot of damage. When I say me, I'm speaking of Satan. If Satan can get inside you and he can work with you, he can have you do some crazy things. I wonder, do those that have committed murders come back and say, God, if you can only let me relive it, give me another chance. You know, words are hard. Words will tear you down. How many of us are holding on some words that somebody done said about us? And we can't let it go. When you're sidetracked. How many of us are keep inflicting? When we get out of here, did you hear what he preached today? I know he wasn't talking about me. Did you hear what he did? He must have been throwing some darts at somebody. Did you hear him today because of the fact, hey, uh-uh, we ain't going to have this? I guess not. But I wanted to tell you, when they do that call, do this for me, it works beautifully. You don't have to say nothing. It works beautifully. Yes. And if you don't learn, see, many of us don't have that anymore. When your cell phone, it says, end call, end call, because you need to call the right person. I had this, and I'm going to share with you. We're going to call it to a conclusion. I had a family member that was ill. And I tell you how it is when we get so caught up in emotions, we don't be thinking. I had a family member that we had to call 911. I wasn't there, and I told them, I said, call 911. And they said, Michael, give me the number. I said, it's 911. And a lot of times we miss it because we're all over the place. Don't miss it with God because there's going to be a day that comes. And you won't be able to call 911 because when Jesus comes back to claim you, it's too late to make a call then. If you don't have the call already in, don't try to get one in then. I want you to know today, let us avoid avoiding sidetracked. You have a mission. The most important thing is your soul. The most important thing is making sure you're connected with God. Don't let a man, a woman, don't let a job, don't let other things that are distract a car, don't let your finances distract you from a relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you something. 
And Sister Patricia, you know I love you, Lady Patricia. Trust me, I am grateful, but I'm going to let you know, Patricia cannot stand between me and God. I want you to know, Zachary and Caleb cannot stand between me and God. Even my grandson, Zachary Michael, cannot stand between me and God because I realize I came in this world alone, and I'm going to leave out of this world alone. And if I don't have my business with God, it is over. So I want to say while the party is jumping, while the party is starting, I want you to know I'm in the count. I am one of his. I belong to him. This is what soldier looks like. This is what the grace of God looks like. This is what God would do if we don't sidetrack. Oh, devil, you're not going to sidetrack me. I don't care who walked by me. I don't care what they give me. I got to stay my eyes on the prize for the high calling. Are you counted for it? Are you sidetracked? Are you on track? Make up your mind today. Judas didn't make up his mind. He made up the mind that I'm not going to be of God. I'm going to take my life. It was Peter that ran away, but Peter knew how to come back home. Come back home to God if you need to come back home. But I want you to know there's no death like the death of Jesus Christ. He had to be nailed to the cross. He had to be put in a barred tomb. He had to be resurrected. And then he was ascended, not just for me, but for you, for you, for you, and you. Get up! And let's be able to say, get up for Jesus. Let's be able to say, Lord, I'm accounted for it. I won't be sidetracked. I won't let the devil steal my joy. I won't let the devil think that he has defeated me because I know him more than a conqueror. On this rock, I stand on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. Now, how many of us are going to be not be sidetracked, but let God put us on track? And if you're not on track, get on it right now. It's a good feeling knowing that you're walking with God. It's a good feeling knowing that God got you. It's a good feeling to be able to dance for the Lord. It's a good feeling to say, Lord, I lift your name up high. It's a good feeling to say, amazing grace. It's a good feeling to say, what a friend we have in Jesus. It's a good friend to say, we come this far by faith. It's a good feeling to say, the king of kings, who is your king of kings? I tried it my way. It didn't work. I tried it my way. I messed up. I tried it my way. It caused a lot of hurt, harm, and danger. I tried it my way, and it led to the road of destruction. Get it right. You know, I was going to preach today about all the prosperity. I was going to preach today is about glam, you, and not about me. But ain't God. That's me. What I'm going to preach is what thus saith the Lord. And if I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. I want to say I'm in the army. What about you? I'm saying that the doors of the church are open. Soldiers, let us stand up. Soldiers, let us be accounted for. Soldiers, let us wave our hands. Even if it's our birthday today, let us wave our hands. Let us let it be known that God is good. He is mighty. Hey, brother organist, brother Meadows, you can hit something. You can do something because I know God is in your hands. So whatever God leads you to do, let us do what God has given us to do. Can you feel it? I saw a rabbit on the road that was dead. I saw a possum. I've seen a deer. I've seen an armadillo. But one thing I can say, thank God I was on the side of the road. Thank God that he's given me another day's journey. I can smell Jesus up in this place because I can smell him. I can feel him. The doors of the church are open. And somebody asked me, what do that mean? The doors of the church means that the doors are open. There's somebody that has not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior.
so they can see we have those over here. Make sure everyone that desires to participate with us in communion that you have your sacraments. As we hold these sacraments in our hand, I want you to know it's more than just a cup. It's more than just having a cracker with it. I want you to remember we talked about avoiding being sidetracked. Even when Judas was amongst Jesus, he was not sidetracked in the work that needed to be done. He was not sidetracked that he was had to do this. And then we find him guarding, going to the Garden of Gethsemane. When Jesus needed for Peter, James, and John to stay away, to stay woke, they went to sleep. But Jesus did not get sidetracked. But during this time in the upper room, you know there were three in reference to preparation that knew about what was taking place. It was Jesus, John, and Peter. It wasn't James with them when they went to go and set up the upper room. Jesus sent two. 
They had a mission. I wonder if, if Judas would have known before he came into the upper room what was going on when he had brought the soldiers in a little earlier. But God's timing is perfect in every way. In the night that Jesus was going to be betrayed, in that night, he stayed focused. He reminded them that this bread he has before them, it is broken in remembrance of his body. The cup that was before them was the cup of the New Testament in his blood. This will be the last time Jesus ever had the Passover on this earth. The next time Jesus is before us and wears communion, he's coming back to claim his church. But until that time, we commune with one another, remembering what Jesus had done for each and every one of us. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless the bread, bless the wine that is being taken, the juice that we have in remembrance of you, Jesus. None of us are worthy. If any of us think we're worthy to take this sacrament, we're fooling ourselves, but it's your grace which is sufficient. God, we don't have a right to judge one another. We got to judge ourselves. And we understand the true judgment will come when you come back to claim your church. So, Lord, who am I to tell another brother don't take this bread? And who am I to tell a sister don't drink of this cup? Help me ask to cleanse our mind, our hearts, and our spirit. Whatever we brought in here that was not of God, let us remove it now that we find peace and joy in communion with our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit and God Almighty. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, we have the bread that is before us. Let us break it. Let us eat together. We have the cup, which is the New Testament in his blood. Let us all drink together. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we do show the Lord's death till he comes. It says they went out singing hymns going to the Mount of Olives. We don't have Mount of Olives, but we do have hills of trials and tribulations. We have to let this dying world know that Jesus lives. He lives. He lives. Brothers and sisters, please stand. For those ministers that will be going to the Ross's home, we will meet shortly after I get a chance to say hello to the congregation. We will go, so we'll meet at the house. The deacons met last week in the deaconesses, and we just want everyone to keep the Ross family lifted up as we keep all families. And we're going to thank each and every one of you all for being with us. Let us pray for our benediction. Lord, this day has come, and before we know it, it will pass. But we take no second lightly. God, every breath that we take, every step that we make, and every thought that comes upon us, we ask you to cover us. We have communed as brothers and sisters, as the word has told us to do. Lord, have thy favor upon all these that are before us and all those that are desired to be with us and those that are live streaming with us. Lord, have mercy upon them all. We ask for favor. We ask for your grace. We ask for your presence always in our lives. We thank you. And Lord, we would like to leave as, as Apostle Paul said, finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. And live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with us all. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen.
Charlie. 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 